So why evangelize over capture? Like, why even care? There are a whole lot of things that can happen around you while you're filming. 360's always been about that, capturing everything around you. But now, thinking of it with the mentality of capture everything around you because you're gonna use some of it, and at any point, any one part of it, or it might be compelling enough to turn into your actual finished piece of footage. That's a pretty powerful tool. So as a secondary camera or as a primary camera in production, 360 cameras for overcapture serve many purposes. <laughs> So here we are at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and just up the street from here, about four blocks, is a little tunnel that's between a couple of buildings on a main street, and it's where a lot of graffiti artists continuously paint over the top of each other's art, and it's a well-known spot for a lot of activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the camera down, and I'm going to start a 10 camera system and capture three different resolutions here today. Those resolutions are going to be 4K, 8K, and 12K. One of the things I always do when I'm trying to set up a camera in the ideal position and there's sunlight is I put it in the shadow. Even the full 360 head, if you're looking out into the shadow, uh, from the shadows into the light, you're going to get a much better exposure. And from those resolutions, I'm going to show you two things. Both how much resolution we're able to capture in a quadrant, one quarter of the actual shot. Also to show the movement of the camera in a relatively public spot where there's going to be enough people walking by that occasionally you'll see some, uh, some action that you would normally only be able to pan to or uh, tilt up to or move around with um, if you had some kind of an automated system. I'm going to go ahead and start these up at 2.7K, which is sort of my standard 4 k We're going to do one lower and one higher in terms of resolution to compare the two. But this first shot is going to roll with it. You'll notice I'm not moving the, the actual lock position of the camera at all, nor am I rotating the camera, changing the orientation of any of the cams. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing in 1440. We'll see, we'll punch into the, some of the same material on the walls uh, as people walk through. So I just killed our 1440 shot, and um, I've got all the cameras set, um, verifying that all the settings were correct, and I'm, I'm seeing the right count uh, for all the takes in, uh, in each camera. So what we're gonna do now is a little bit more experimental. I know in theory this is gonna work. I don't know how it's gonna react color in our post-production process. For me, this is kind of a first, and this has been in my head for a while, and I'm really excited to see how maybe it comes together um, as well as I hope, and how aesthetically that's going to be really cool to be able to punch into that many pixels and be able to move this anywhere we want. Let's just see how it goes. go back and experiment once we tear all these down uh, and dump the footage into the system. We're going to just see how all of it comes together. And Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we've had a chance to go through all the footage and stitch it and verify that there are significant differences in the overall quality of the finished shot when you reframe it from 4K to 8K to 12K. The great news is that the 12K worked. I had a feeling it was going to work. I didn't have any reason to think it wouldn't work. Um, the only catch I'd say with that is that although the overall resolution is superior, it takes a ton of horsepower. So you really need to be able to justify 
the time that it takes to process both the stitching, the rendering of that stitch, the repositioning in Premiere, and then the final uh, render in Premiere. I took a few quick screen grabs while I was processing and stitching all this footage. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on that today because we're gonna be doing plenty of in-depth tutorials and things that show you more detailed workflow in the future. But for today, I wanna just really focus on that overall finished stitch and the difference between these three pieces of footage that we created in the graffiti tunnel. So this is a side by side by side comparison of the three pieces of footage as they were shot and finished stitched. We're looking at 4K, 8K, and 12K. I'm freeze framing them here because I want you to see the difference in pixelation at the same level of zoom, essentially, which in the tools that I'm using in Premiere is actually called field of view. We've reduced the field of view down to about 11 on each one. The general average it starts at, the default, is 50. When we punch into the footage and look at a human face at that distance, what does it look like? The pixelation difference is considerable. Now when we look at the graphics on the wall, which is another good example of something more static but very detailed, you can see a distinction here as well. You've got a major difference in the overall lines, the linear lines, maybe even some of the color information. There's no question in my mind where the quality is. I think the balance right now hinges on 8K. I can shoot 8K and edit 8K relatively efficiently with even my existing system. And so that's gonna be something I use as a standby for right now, but I cannot wait to have my system just be able to grind through 4K footage, 12K stitches, and reframing for both 1080p final output as well as the 3840 UHD output. So that's my takeaway from all this. Three pieces of footage shot in the exact same position, different resolutions, and to be able to compare the three. Depending on what kind of project you're shooting, you might not need that full 12K to justify the final resolution you're shooting for, but if you want to really punch into it, that's going to be a necessary option. So I hope this helps with some of your decisions in the future when you decide to use 360 footage. What resolution do you want to aim for in the end for your finished stitch? I know there are going to be a lot more of it. I know we're going to have a lot more conversations about it. And I'm looking forward to seeing those comments down below. And like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.